tutorial, I'm going to show you step by step on how to use KiCad to generate a layout of a microstrip PCB board. And we're going to be generating the Gerber files and the drill files necessary um, to have this board fabbed by a board house like Oshpark. Um, here's some similar boards I made. I didn't have a picture of the exact board that we're going to create here, but this gives you an idea. So we're looking at a top down view of a few different boards I made. Um, you can see we have this PCB or this SMA to PCB board end launch adapter. And then here's our micro strip line. And in this particular example, I'm showing you I had different loads and I had the micro strip line exposed so that I can probe the standing waves. And I silk screened a little ruler here so I can measure the peaks or the anti nodes of the standing wave or the nodes, whatever I wanted to get the wavelength, that kind of thing. Um, the layout that we're going to design here is going to be one of these SMA to PCB board end launch adapters. Then it's going to be a straight through line and then another SMA to PCB board end launch adapter. And here's the particular part. So this um, design actually only has one part, just one of these guys, actually two parts, I guess, because you have two of these, one for the um, input and one for the output. So the bomb list would have one part, but quantity two. Um, okay, so where do we even begin? So the first thing to do, I'm assuming that you haven't used KiCad. So what you want to do is create a folder, a new folder, and you want to put all your KiCad projects in this folder. So I'm going to call this thing My KiCad Projects. Okay, now. I open this folder, I'm going to create two new folders. This first folder is going to be called MicroStrip Tutorial. It's going to hold all the files that we are going to generate using KiCad for this particular um, design. And then we're going to create another folder called um, My Component Library. This file, or this folder, excuse me, is going to contain all the files um, for our library, so all of our library files. So that's even before you start KiCad. You want to generate these two um, folders inside this other folder. Now that we've done that, we can start up KiCad. And we go, which button is it? Um, create new project. So hit this button. And navigate to your MicroStrip tutorial. And then name your file something like MicroStrip tutorial. It doesn't have to have the same name, but I find that it's just simpler to have the same name as the folder. Okay, so I've done that, and now let me triple check that there's some files that have been generated in the folder. Yes, that's good. Okay, now click on this um, icon to start the schematic editor. This is where we're going to enter in our schematic. Now we need to design a custom component, and the component is going to be this PCV or the SMA to PCB board end launch adapter. As far as I know, this particular component is not included in the default library system in KiCad. So we need to do that. Now this actually took me a bit of time to figure out the library structure and how to create a library. It's not that simple, at least in my opinion. So I'll show you how to do it. You go up here to this pencil and book thing, and that's the library editor. So you click on that and we have a new library editor, part library editor. Um, and then at the top, you'll click on File, and then you click on, let's see, Current Library. So File, Current Library, and let's choose this one above Texas. I'm going to pronounce it Silicone. Silicone, okay, so we click on that. So now this the path is pointed towards, you know, the silicone.lib, so it's a library. Now we can start saving components to this library, and that would work, but I find it better just to have your own custom component library. So how do you do that? Well, we're going to go back to File and hit Save Current Library As. 
and now navigate to the folder my component library and for save as call this my component library it can have a different name than the folder but I find it just simpler to keep it the same name and then I hit OK okay so now I'm gonna click here again actually let's just exit out of this okay so what have we done well now if we go to our folder that contained you know our, our KiCad projects and now look it's created a library file that's very good but right now KiCad doesn't know where it is so we need to tell it so let's see Click on library, not library browser. If you click up on preferences, component libraries. Now I know you can't see the menu word preferences, but I'm clicking up here, the menu, there's view, place, preferences, tools. I click on preferences and I hit component libraries. And now I'm going to hit, let's see here, add user defined search path. So I'm going to navigate to my component library and hit open and hit yes to relative search path. So now I've just created a new search path for this program to start looking for libraries. And now in the component library files, I hit add and I navigate to that library file that we just created a couple steps ago. And I double click on that and here it shows up in the list and I hit OK. Now I click on library editor and I shall click on file current library and there's our component library here. So we've created a custom library for our components and I did that sort of a roundabout way by first clicking on one of their default libraries and doing a save as trick. But we got what we needed, our component library. Now, because we did that save as trick to, to create our own custom library, there's going to be all the components that was in that library that we needed to delete. So hit the trash, and these are just components that were in the Silicone library that, you know, were saved along and we did the save as. I chose the Silicone library as opposed to say the Texas Instruments library because this library only has a couple components. If you did this save as trick with the Texas Instruments library, you would have many, many more components to delete and that would take a bunch of time. All right, so let's hit okay and start deleting these components out of our library. We wanna clean up our library so there's no components in there. Done. We now have a nice, fresh library with no components. Okay, so when you're actually ready to create your component, you click here at the library editor, create edit components, and you wanna make sure that you are in our custom library. So I hit file, current library, and make sure that my component library is selected. Um, and then you click here on this red amplifier icon that says create a new component. So click on that. And let's give our component a name. We'll call it SMA PCB Edge Mount. Something like that. Default reference designator. Okay, fine, we can call it U. Um, all right, good. That looks good to me. Now, when you hit OK, you'll get a screen like this. If you zoom in, you'll see the label here. So I'm going to hit M to move it and move it like this and just sort of leave it. So now I got to draw my component. Now this is not the footprint. This doesn't really matter that much. You don't have to be super exact. Um, so to do this, I'm going to click on this rectangle. I'm going to draw the component body. There, something like that. That looks fine. Now let's look, take a better look at our component or a closer look. So this is the component that we're going to be designing or uh, representing on the schematic. Um, let's see what the data sheet shows. Here's a good picture right here. So there's our component. So I can zoom in and move it. Now look, it's 
it's sort of natural to see it as a three terminal component. Yes, there's really only two terminals, ground and the signal, but here's our signal, this center conductor, and then it's like there's two different um, terminals for ground. So I'm going to treat this as a three terminal component. I'm going to have a terminal for this ground, a terminal for that signal, and a terminal for this ground. Um, okay, let me see if I can move this. So, you click here for the CAD pins. Okay, when I said terminal, I guess you can also say the word pin. So I'm going to treat this as a three pin component. So let's create a pin, put one there. And let's call this pin name brown, because that's what it's meant to do. And the pin number we'll say is one. And the orientation you want to make sure is um, left, like this. And then I'm going to, we'll move it up here. So there it is, pin one, ground. Let's create pin two. So pin two is our signal. So call it signal, call it pin two. Um, I think everything else looks good. Probably missing something, but it looks good right now. And then let's create our third pin by just clicking somewhere. And this is also ground, and this is pin three. All right, so we just created our symbol for our component. I think you click here, save current library to disk, include last component changes, yes. Okay, it's been modified, the library has been modified, so this is a component in our component library. And let's hit exit, so we just created that. All right, so now let's draw our schematic. So we, again, it's not on the screen that you're seeing, but if you look up at the menu, you'll see word place. So hit, click on the word place, and then click the word component. And we want to place a component. So now you have this pencil icon. Once you do that, and then click somewhere, and now you can place a component. Now you can place all these components that have been already created. You know, let's look at this Intel one. You know, no one's gonna stop you from, boom, putting that component there, but we don't have any external components in this case. So let's delete that component and go place component again. And let's look for our custom library that we created and the component that we just created. So there it is, my component library, and there's our component. SMA PCB edge mount. Click OK and place it there. Okay, now we're going to have two of these guys in our circuit, so we're going to create another one. So I go up to Place Component, click somewhere, click this again. Um, okay, we'll leave it like that. I'm going to mirror the component. Let's see if this wants to work. See, undo, and mirror it. Um, where am I? There, mirror it like that. So I just mirrored the components so that they're facing each other to make it simple to connect to. And now I'm going to click here on place wire. I'm going to click on pin one and go to pin one. Three to three, and two to two. And then I'm going to tell this thing that there's a ground here. So I'm going to click on the ground symbol. Um, let's see. There's ground, G-N-D. And then make sure to connect this node to ground. And then there's a ground right here as well. Then I'm going to connect this to ground. Maybe it's a good time to save it. So I'm going to go to File, Save Schematic Project. OK, so what's next now that we have our schematic drawn? Um, you can click over here. Let's see if it wants to show. So Annotate Schematic Components. And you just click on annotate, hit OK, and it will name these components. So it was sort of before U with a question mark, now it's U1 and U2. 
And then you can click here and it will perform the electrical rules check and hit run. Um, now in this case, it's giving me an error. It says there are no pins to drive it. So this thing is detecting like there's no power supply, um, which is fine in this case. We don't have a power supply. So I'm gonna hit close and generate netlist. You can then click on this and hit generate. And I just put it right in the same folder as all my other files. It's starting to accumulate, so I hit save. Um, we don't really care about a bill of materials. And footprint editor. Okay, so I think footprint editor is next. This is going to be interesting. Now is a good time to remind ourselves that KiCad is different than other layout tools in that you create the components separately from the footprints. And then later on in the process, you associate them. Whereas... In many other tools like DipTrace, you create the components and the footprints basically at the same time. Okay, so now we're ready to create our footprint, and here is the data sheet for our edge mount connector. And the top view we see will have three pads, and then the bottom will have two. I'm going to modify this slightly, and then I'm going to connect the left and the right pads to the bottom of the board via a couple via holes. But other than that, they'll be pretty much the same. So how do we do this? What we need to do is go up here to Footprint Editor, click on that, go File, New Footprint. We want to create a new footprint. Let's call this SMA Edge Mount 1. And now we're going to remember that KiCad uses um, libraries to store its footprints and its components, for that matter. So we need to create a library or save this into an already created library. Well, if we go to File, Set Active Library, you can see all the different libraries available that you can save this to. But we want to create our own custom library. So we're going to go to File, Save Footprint, and New Library, navigate to our folder, hit Open, hit OK, and sure I did that correctly. Well, to make sure I did that correctly, what we do is we go down and we look inside our directory and we see that indeed KiCad has created this new folder called microstrip underscore tutorial dot pretty. This dot pretty is um, KiCad speak for this is a library folder that contains footprints, footprint library. Okay, let's something here. Here's our editor. Now the problem is if you go to set active library it's still not there. This library is not in the path, the library path. So to do that we go to preferences, but print library wizards. And now this will let us add a library to the path. So click on you know file on my computer, hit next. Then we want to navigate to our folder through this menu thing. So we're going to go to Users, Aaron and Shear, that's me, Desktop, My KiCad Projects, and there it is, our dot pretty folder. So hit Next. Everything looks good. Hit Next. Here you can set the library to be added to the global library config. That would be visible by all projects or just the current project library. Let's just do just the current project library. Hit Finish. But it's still says no active library, so we go to File, Set Active Library, and now look, there's our library that we just created, Microsoft Tutorial, so hit OK. And now if I go up to File, I can actually click on Save Footprint and Active Library, where before that wasn't available because there was no active library set. So I can hit Save, and just save right over what I have, keep the same name, and hit OK. Now it's time to rock and roll, so let's create our pads. Let's do pad one, pad two, pad three. Now, what did I just do? I just clicked on this little icon, add pads, and then I just, once I did that, then I clicked here in our workspace and add our three pads. Okay, let's click on pad two. We're gonna right click and hit edit pad. We want this pad type to be SMV. We want it to be rectangular. We wanna keep it on the front layer, top of the board. 
we're going to reposition to 0, 0, so that the middle of this rectangle is at 0, 0. We want our size in the x direction to be 1.5 millimeters, and we want the size in the y direction to be 5.6. And everything else looks good. And there's our pad. Now I kind of jumped the gun here. What you generally want to do is make sure that the units and the grid are what you like. So my units are millimeter and the grid is 0.1 millimeter. That's fine for now. Okay, and then these words, this text is in our way. So let's just hit M, highlight over, hit M, and then you can move it. All right, let's work on pad one. Edit pad. We want this to be through hole, but the shape we want to be rectangular. We want there to be a via here. This is how I'm modifying the layout of the PCB that was given by the manufacturer. So 0.7 will be our via hole size. Let's make our X direction or position negative 4.25. And our Y position for now will be zero. The size in the X direction will be 1.6. And the size in the Y will make 2.5. And we want to make sure that the layers is all copper layers. And just for fun, we'll click on paste as well. So these are the layers. Um, mask is basically saying, it's going to tell your board house, hey, we want this to have exposed copper. So no solder mask over this. And paste is saying, if your board house has a... Um, a way of dispensing um, solder paste on this pad and saying, hey, put solder paste on this pad. Boardhouse like Oshpark, as far as I know, doesn't have, doesn't use this paste layer, but it doesn't hurt to throw it in there. All right, so there it is. Now let's hit M to move. And we want to just move this thing straight down, as straight as I can. Now I'm dealing with the grid issue here. It's, it's snapping to the grid, which is fine. But the dimensions, the grid dimensions is 0.1. This doesn't have to be perfect. So that looks about correct. Now I'm going to right click on this again and hit duplicate, duplicate pad. And then I'm going to move it, boom, right there. So there's pad one. We got pad one, pad two, and now we need pad three. In fact, we're going to create pad three from pad one. So we can actually delete what we have up here, right click and hit delete pad. Now right click on this pad and hit duplicate pad, duplicate pad, and then move it say there. Right click again and hit pad number will be three. And let's change our X position um, to 4.25 It's on the other side our center pad. Now I want to make sure that the Y position is correct, so I'm going to go back to pad one, right click, hit edit pad, and just kind of take note. It's 4.2, 1.5. So I want this to be symmetric, so I guess I want 4.2, 1.5. Okay, like that. Perfect. Now we're going to Right click, hit duplicate pad, and then move it right there. And just from kind of looking at it, it looks very similar to what we have um, in our data sheet. I'm going to save it. So file, Let's hit save footprint in active library, keep it the same name so it saves over the same file, and hit OK. If you wanted to, you can add. Um, you know, graphic lines or polygons if you want. You can make a little box around this thing, whatever you want to do. We're not going to mess with that. We don't need those. Um, but what is very useful is to go up to View and then go to 3D View. And then you can really see if this looks like you want it. So this is the top part of the board. And then I'm going to take a look at the bottom. And it looks just like how I'm expecting it. So that's great. All right, so you can X out here. It's saying, you know, do you want to save? I just saved it, but fine, we'll do a save and exit situation. Okay, let's go back to our schematic. 
Now, once you create new footprints, I find it just a good idea to generate a new netlist. So hit generate, and hit save, and hit replace. This netlist will come in handy when we're at um, a later stage and we're actually laying out a printed circuit board. Okay, the next thing to do is to run this CV, PCB. We need to associate components and footprints. So right now, this component is not associated with the footprint, but we're going to make that happen right now by clicking on this button. And I usually get errors here. I don't know, maybe just certain libraries have changed. I'm not exactly sure. I just hit return. Okay. Now what this thing is going to do is show all the components in our circuit. And we only have two components, the PCB edge mount. Now we need to associate this with a footprint. Now in general, you know, you've got all these footprints that come pre-built with PiCAD. You know, there's ones for LED. You can spend your whole lifetime looking at all these different footprints. Here I'll look at, for example, you know, oddities. What is that? It's a net tie one. If I double click on that, actually what just happened is it associated the footprint. If you want to see the footprint, you click up here at view selected footprint. So this is just the footprint that is available with PiCAD. We don't want that. We want the footprint we just spent a bunch of time creating. So if we look in this library directory, we see, aha, microstrip tutorial. And now inside this library is only, let me, Inside this library, we only have one component. Now we can save multiple, not component, footprint. We can save multiple footprints to our footprint library, but we only have one. So let's take a, let's, if we want to associate actually, we just sort of double click. And then you can see that here in this middle pane, things change, double click. If you want to view it, you can hit that. And we can view what we just found. Okay, so now we can hit what does this thing do? Save footprint associated with schematic. Okay. So do that and hit exit. And maybe I'm going to go over here. I save a lot. My computer is always crashing. So do save schematic project. Okay. And now the moment that we've all been waiting for. Let's actually lay out our PCB. So we're going to click on that button. Just in case you missed that, it was this icon run PCB new and now what we want to do is click on net so this is going to read the net list now this is where this program interfaces with the schematic program so read net list and read current net list and it's saying that there's an error because there's a footprint missing okay let's just exit without saving so what happened is I associated the footprint, but I never ran the generate netlist button. So again, so I'm going to hit generate netlist, hit generate, save it, you know, replace the old file, and there we go. Now let's go back to run PC new, hit net, and then read current netlist, and now there's no errors, and hit close. Now what happened? It basically threw in our components right here, our footprints. Now, if you right click, you can sort of select each pad and or footprint, that kind of thing. If you click on this button, and now you right click, it gives you different options. And we want an option that says global spread in place and spread out all footprints. And, you know, this is such a simple board. We only have a couple, you know, footprints. But if you have a whole bunch of different footprints and things, when you do this global spread, it will spread all these different components out so you can actually see what you're doing. In this case, I didn't really need to do it. I'm just kind of showing. Okay, let's click off that button. Now, I'm going to hit M and move this guy over here, and M and move this guy over there, just kind of separate them. Now, I want to rotate this, so hit M, and I think it's plus R. So hit plus R a couple times and rotate it like this. 
And I'm going to hit M, and I'm going to hit plus R to rotate. Nope. One, two. There we go. I want them to face each other like that. All right. And now I'm going to kind of move them so they're just touching. And here I really want to make sure I'm on millimeters. That's correct. And my grid size is 0.25 millimeter. That's correct. OK. So just kind of move them apart. Now, I don't really have the dimensions or any design dimensions here. We're just looking at how to use KiCad. So I'll, I'll spread them like maybe this far apart. Now, in general, you know, you're going to be exact, right? And so what you want to do is look at the bottom here. And you can measure things out using um, these coordinates that are in millimeters. So if you want this to be exactly five millimeters apart, you can use these coordinates down here to make that happen. Okay, so this is good. Sorry for jumping around here. Um, what do we do next? Let me just make sure that this looks, looks like it might be, yep, that's correct. Okay, so the next thing to do is let's connect these things together. So I'm going to, now you have to be careful. The way this works is there's all these different layers and you're drawing these, you're drawing different um, things on different layers. So we want to be on the copper layer on the front side of the board and we want to click here on add tracks and vias. Now the track is going to be 0.25 millimeter wide, which is very thin. And that's fine. In fact, that's what we want. So let's just connect this to that. And then double click to stop it. Now you see we just created a track. That's not going to be the width of our final track, but it's it just connects these things together. So let's do the same with this one. Connect. 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 Okay. Now, let's say we want this to be a 50 ohm microstrip line. In fact, not microstrip, but we'll do um, coplanar waveguide with ground characteristic, you know, with ground. And we're using this ground characteristic impedance calculator to find all this stuff. So I already put in the dimensions. Now, how do I know what the dielectric constant is of the PCB board? If you go to Oshpark, you can find on their website, um, we're going to use a two layer board, and we're looking at the layout, material specs. And you can see the detailed specs. It says PCB substrate dielectric constant is 4.6 at 1 megahertz. Now, this is not an RF board. It's going to change as frequency increases, and it's probably not going to be perfect, you know, exact 4.6. There's probably quite a lot of tolerance on here compared to real RF boards like, you know, a Rogers board. But, you know, this is FR4, and um, let's say we're going to, you know, be around 1 megahertz or couple hundred megahertz. I'm sure this is a good um, value. Anyways, so that's where we got it. 4.6. Now we also have the thickness, 60 mil. Um, and that's about all we need. So now I'm going to this calculator. Now 60 mil is about 1.524 millimeters. So that's what I threw in. And what I did in this calculator is I put in our epsilon r is 4.6. Um, and how did I find this calculator? I just searched on Google, CPW microstrip calculator. And I want this width of the gap. I just arbitrarily chose one, and I played around with the width of the track itself, which is S in this figure, and hit calculate, and I got something that's about 50 ohms. It's close enough, especially considering the tolerance and all the rest of it. So that's going to be the width of our track is 2.5 millimeter to make this thing 50 ohm and we'll need to have a ground plane that's separated by this one millimeter width. So I'm going to write this down so I don't forget. So 2.5 millimeter width. Go back to our program and what do I do? I hit design rules, then go to design rules. And then hit global design rules. Now this is where you can add um, different track width. So I'm going to hit 2.5 and you have to associate it with a via, unfortunately, as far as I know. So I'm going to use the same via size as the default, 0.6 and 0.4. That's 0.6 diameter, 0.4 drill. 
Um, let's see, it's not happy. Oh, it looks like the units are in inches, that's why. So hit millimeters. Thought it was in millimeters, but okay, it wasn't. So go back to design rules, design rules. 2.5 millimeters. The diameter we're just looking up here is 0.6 and 0.4. You can change that, it doesn't have to be that, but I'm just arbitrarily choosing it. No drill size defined in row one. Let's see. Does that mean? Oh, okay. Hit OK. Now it works. So let's see if it actually created. Now, if I go to tracks, there we go. Track 2.4 millimeter. And then, you know, here's our different vias. So we just created another one that's exactly the same. All right. 2.5 2.5 millimeter. Now we go make sure we're at the front layer, top layer of the copper. And then we click here, which is add trace. And now this should be a much thicker trace. And that is that it is. And then zoom in. Maybe that looks good. Okay, so starting to look good. Now what we want to do, what do we want to do? Let's add our board outline. So to do this, we go back to our Osh Park and somewhere in here it tells you See if I can find it. It tells you the minimum distance between the edge of your board and the copper. I'm not seeing it. Let's see. see. It tells you, you know, the minimum trace width and all that. Um, here we go. Minimum 15 mil keep out distance. 15 mil. Let's go to what is that in millimeters? So 15 mil to millimeters. 0 0.015 inches to millimeters. Fine. Google doesn't go mills to millimeters those inches. 0 0.381 millimeters. I'm writing that down. So about 0 0.4 millimeter. That is again the keep out distance from traces to the edge of the board. You need this little buffer, about 0.4 millimeters. Okay, so now we know that. So that's what we need to make our the edge. So I'm going to move this stuff. I don't like this right there. So exit. Oops. I'm going to hover over one of these words and then right click. And can I just delete it? Edit text. Maybe if I just get rid of it like that. Okay, good. Reference one. Let's edit the text. Just don't want it there. It's annoying to me. Okay. Let's do the same over here. For this very simple case, we don't need to label anything, so I'm just getting rid of these. Edit parameters, no. Value, edit text, go away. Edit text. Okay. Now, how do you tell this thing what the board outline is? Well, what you do is there's another layer. It's called edge cuts. So you click on edge cuts. And then it's this blue dashed line. And that's how you define the um, outline of your board. So click on this. And now I just want to make sure that my grid is good. That looks pretty good. Um, just going to make a grid point two. Okay, so I'm going to start my outline here. Kind of, no, that doesn't look too good. Let's actually make a grid. Five again. So I forgot this thing has a width to it. Um, maybe here. Okay. So now I'm going to draw a rectangle around my circuit. I'm not going to be very careful. It's going to be all lopsided and not perfect, but this is just to get us started with KiCad. Okay. There should be something there. It's just a little cursor. Okay, now I'm going to double check if this is all correct. 
Now, sometimes you'll get into errors with these edge cuts, and you have to try again and again, because um, it doesn't seem to connect as one continuous whole. But let's just see if this works. So view, 3D view, and it looks like we got our board. Now, this would give us an error if the edge cuts wasn't correct. So that's the top of the board. And then let's go check out the bottom of the board. Everything looks good. Now what do we do? Well, we need this ground plane um, at the top and the bottom. Let's do the top ground plane. So what we're going to do is go back to f.cu. So we're talking about the copper at the top of the board. And we're going to add a fill zone. But before I do the fill zone thing, I'm just going to show you this just in case you need or want to know. We're going to do a keep fill, a key, uh, an add keep out area. We're just going to assume we want a square that doesn't have any copper somewhere in space for no reason. So I clicked on this. And I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to say, I don't want any copper, no copper pour. So I, collect, I select this option. And I'm going to just going to create a little keep out zone just to demonstrate that it can be done. And I kind of created it, and it's just there. And if I right click, you can um, edit the zone properties and you can change things again, but okay. Now I'm showing you this because in RF, you know, we're constantly drawing different little shapes of copper. Uh, maybe if you're making an antenna or something. So this is a useful thing for RF. Okay, so that we just created a little zone saying, hey, no copper in the zone. Now, how do we create our copper pour? We're going to go back to f.cu, that layer. And we're going to go up here and look at this, or click on this add filled zone icon. Now, because we already have our board outline, this is super easy. We don't need to be careful where we put this, um, put this layer, not this layer, but put this zone, so long as that it encompasses the entire board. So I'm just going to kind of randomly click out here. And I want this to be ground. So my net, you go to ground. And clearance is one millimeter. It's exactly what we're designing for. And we can leave all the other stuff the same. And now I'm just going to kind of click. So we zoom in to make sure it connects. And then double click. OK. Now this creates an outline, but we haven't filled the copper pour yet. So to do that, I right click on the zone. And then, how do I do this? Fill or refill zones. I click on that and notice that it created our copper pour. Now, it left one millimeter spacing between our line and um, this outside area. And just as it needed to do, it did not put any copper in this square. And because it had a one millimeter um, What's the right word? One millimeter, what does it call it? Clearance. Had a one millimeter clearance so that it cleared, or it did not fill any copper within one millimeter to the edge. And you can also see that it has some thermal relief here. So while this is, you know, ground up here and this pad is ground, it didn't just completely connect it because that would make it difficult to solder. Instead, it added these little um, bridges so that, you know, they're called thermal relief so that you can electrically, it's all connected, but it makes it a lot easier to solder. Okay, now we still need our bottom layer. So to do that, we go down here to b.cu, that's our bottom copper layer. And we're going to do the same thing. Click on our icon, fill the zone. We want this to be ground, and then we fill it. So we highlight, or not highlight, but we um, draw our zone to make sure that it encompasses our entire board. Doesn't matter exactly the shape. Double click, right click, fill or refill all zones. And the green is the copper on the bottom layer. So now is a good time to save it. So file save. Okay, so now let's take a 3D view of this thing. So we go to view at the top and go 3D view. And here is our board. Now this is the bottom it looks like, and here's the top. 
Now looking at this, I realized that I was not very careful and maybe I made a little bit too much um, spacing between the edge and the footprint for the edge mount connector, but it actually would work. You can see this, I did a pretty good job. I had the edge close to this edge here. Um, so, you know, this is not perfect. This is just to demo how to use KiCad to create a you know, microstrip line. Um, are we done? Well, no, what we want to do, it's always a good practice to create little V fences. So this top layer where I'm kind of moving this cursor is ground and this, this top layer on this side is ground. And they are connected to the bottom by these vias here at the pads, but it's nice if you had a bunch of vias um, connecting these things. It's called a via fence, people call it. So let's create our via fence. First thing we want to do is let's get on the top layer. We want to make our trace go back to 0.25 millimeter. We want a thin trace to do this. And then click here for add tracks in via. And it's difficult to see what's going on, so I'm going to click this arrow um, for the back copper. And all it does, it doesn't do anything to the actual layer or copper or anything. It just, it's a view deal. So when I click on that arrow or, or this check mark, it, 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 um, you don't see the back copper layer. So it just makes it easier to see. All right, so to create our via fence, I'm going to go really fast here. I'm not going to be exact or, or try that hard, but you click somewhere there. And now I'm going to hit the V button. I just created a via. Now I'm on the bottom layer. And I'm going to create another via by hitting V. And then I'm going to try to not mess this up. Click, and then I'm going to hit V, and now I'm in this, hit V, and just make your little track. You're just weaving V. Keep going, then hit V. Keep going, hit V. Keep going, hit V. You know, normally you'd make this very regular, right? Be careful if you're actually making a board, but you're just going quickly. Click, hit V, hit V. And now I'm going to double click. And that's my, and then hit exit. And this is my little uh, via fence I just created. And then you can do the same thing at the bottom. So I'll do it real quick here. So what, again, what am I doing? I hit the um, top layer copper, f.cu. I'm adding a track and I'm making sure that it's a thin track so I can kind of maneuver my way through here. The via size is here. You can also create another via size if you want. And then I click, and you know maybe I want to hit V right there, hit via. Then move a little bit. Now it's creating a track at the bottom layer. When I move, hit V, hit V. I want to be careful I don't. Hit V, and then you create a little via fence. I'm going to go super fast, crazy fast. Double click and then hit exit. Okay, now what does this thing look like? You can go to view, 3D view, and there's our little our vias that are connecting the top ground plane to the bottom ground plane. Okay, what's next? Well, there's a few things you can also do. You might find it useful to go here and let's say you want to add some text. So how do you add text? You go to the front silk screen layer by clicking here on the right. And then I'm going to just say, you know, test. OK, and there's the text. Now, what if you want text at the bottom layer? Let's see, this thing is not being so nice. If I... OK, so if I want the bottom silk screen, I click here, b.silk. And then I click on the text button and I'll just write my name. Hit OK, and there's me. 
And now I can go to View 3D Viewer, and there's our text. Okay, there's something else that you may want to do. Maybe you don't want solder mask everywhere like we see here. So if I go view 3D viewer, you can see that there is no solder mask on these pads. Right? They're exposed copper, but all the other copper in the system is going to have solder mask over it, except I guess for the vias. Though these are very um, these vias are very small. I mean, their diameter is small, so you might actually have solder mask over the vias. But um, basically, we, let's say you wanted to not have solder mask over a piece of this board. Maybe you wanted no solder mask over the line right in the middle so you can probe it. Right now, if you put a probe and you touched this point of the line, you wouldn't get a signal. I mean, you would because it's RF, but you wouldn't make this electrical, you know, conduction, um, or excuse me, electrical connection. There wouldn't be metal touching metal. It would be metal touching solder mask than metal. So what if we want to expose that metal? And again, you can see here, this is a problem with KiCad. It's as annoying. <laughs> it, you can see that the graphics aren't kind of updating. So sometimes if you hit minimize screen, to maximize, you'll get them back. So what we want to do, this always takes me a little bit of time to think about, let's say the front mask, so F dot mask flare, and you will create a filled zone. It took me a while to think, is it unfilled or filled? Well, you don't want the mask, okay. You create a filled zone, and let's say we want to have no solder mask right here at the middle. So I click, and you get these options, and I'm going to say F dot mask. And then I'm going to create a little, a little rectangle thing. And there's my little zone. So this is going to tell the program, or eventually it's going to tell Oshpark or whatever your board house is, to not put solder mask in this little zone. We can see this with our 3D view. And now look, you can see that the copper is exposed as well as, it's hard to see because it's a very similar color, but not just the copper is exposed, but the dielectric, the FR4 surface itself. So that comes in handy. Hit File and Save. All right, so now we are finally ready to generate our Gerber and Drill files. So we're done with our layout. So what we do, what we do is we go to File, Plot, and I'm going to, actually before I do this, let me close it. I'm going to go back to my project directory, and I'm going to go in my, my little Microsoft tutorial folder. I'm going to create another folder called um, Gerber Drills throw that in my tutorial folder. So there it is. So I'm going to put all my Gerber drill files in this file, or this folder. So to do that, I go back to KiCad, hit File, Plot. Now you need to choose all the layers. So I'm going to have F.CU, B.CU, so the front and back copper layers, front and back silk screen. You don't need to do the paste because Oshpark doesn't have paste layers. Um, the mask you want, and then you want the edge cut. So that's it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different layers. You want this to use Protel file name extensions. Leave everything else the same in general, um, for this case at least. Hit Browse for Output Directory and go to that Gerber Drill folder we just made. Hit Open. If you want to use Relative Path, why not? And now when I go back there, I oh, didn't do it yet. I guess I have to go click on. Um, down here, though you can't see it on the screen, there's a, a button that says plot. So click on plot, and then it, now it should have created everything. And there's all my Gerber files. Gerber is great, but you also need your drill files. So to do that, at the bottom, again, you can't see, but there's a button called generate drill file. I click on that. And 
believe you can leave everything as it is. You can even use, leave the drill units as inches. And all you do, make sure that the browser or the this thing is on the drill files um, folder, same folder, which it is. Um, that's your output directory. Then hit drill file button, and it should have created it. So that's all there is to it. And now what you want to do is zip this up in a drive. So I'm going to right click, compress, and now it's as a zip folder or zip file. Okay. Now for the real test. So here is I um, logged into Oshpark. And it says select a file on your computer. Well, that means select this zip file. So let's organize this. What we're going to do is do the momentous drag and drop. It's processing. My fingers are crossed. And here you can enter your project name and description. Oh, this looks good. There's no errors. It looks like it works. Work. And you can see, it's kind of hard to see maybe, but if you zoom in, that this indeed looks exactly like what we're expecting. Now, normally, I'll use a Gerber view software that's different than KiCad to check out the Gerber files, but I'm just skipping that step. But anyway, you can actually see a little Gerber view here on Oshpark and it looks great and you can see that it will cost you five dollars and ten cents for three of these boards what a killer deal so I hope this video helped you a little bit I know I rambled a bit but um, there's a lot of details you kind of have to keep in your your brain as you go through this this process but once you do it a few times it's not too bad